Hey everyone, it's Joe Glines here in Dallas, Texas. Yeah, and Jackie here from Copenhagen, Denmark. Um, so we were uh, we were chatting here, and I was showing Jackie something I had seen. Let me share my screen here. Uh, I saw I've been watching these videos where people use like OBS and other tools, and they were using this something like this. And I, I they're like they even what really made me laugh was like, oh, and they're very reasonably priced. And I'm like, oh, okay, let me go look at one. And I'm like, oh, 15 keys, okay. $200. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, this is nothing. Um, and so I, ha I started asking Jackie of like, you know, I said was what I thought of was I, I saw this 10 key um, and it was, I think it was $12 uh, on Amazon. I could probably look here at my orders, but I have so many. Um, you guys, you know, everyone will laugh at how much I actually order. Oh, don't look at my wife's. Uh, those are her anniversary presents. Um, so this was, where's the price? Oh, it was 15 bucks. I, I, I went way out. There were cheaper ones, but um, this one kind of was bright. So I figured, hey, whatever. So, so when I ordered it and we were just working through, what I wanted to know was because my keyboard has the same 10 keys in it, right? It, it, um, can, we, can we say, hey, when someone presses the, the five on the, the 10 key instead of my keyboard, can auto hotkey you know, differentiate that? So that's where we were. Um, and now Jackie, actually, you know, Jackie, let me give you control. You're, you're, you're much better at this than there. Um, we were trying to figure out the, uh, remember the, uh, the keyboard hook, right? Is what we had seen that we needed to have running. Yeah, we, uh, I was like, I, I don't know because, hey, it's I haven't done enough with different types of keyboards and setups and stuff. I just use most of the time a plain old keyboard use a hot key or a hot string and that's it. And, and I know people have done quite a few things and I was talking about a specific video that was on, on our hot keys homepage at one, at one point, the art of the barge or something like that, where a guy had, had made a script that would allow him to use an abundant amount of keyboards. I, I don't remember if it was eight, 10, 20, whatever it was, it was a lot. I was like, okay, let's let's start somewhere. So I was like, if we have a script, you know, we have a pretty simple script with a, a hot key here on pad four, and and we go um, at the bottom. It's not running. Oh, yeah, it is. Was yeah. It? it is. Yep, it's uh, the green oh. one at the bottom. No, the very bottom. The very bottom. The very bottom. There you oh, go. No. Okay, so we'll open this. We'll go to view. We'll open the key history and script info. And we were ready to press the hotkey here. And I'll see if, if mine goes through to you. It did. So <laughs> I was able to trigger that small script there. Um, Hello world, it says. And if I press F5 here, I was hoping to see it. But of course, it didn't because of this small note here. Only the script's own keyboard events are shown because the keyboard hook isn't installed. Fair enough, we'll need to install the keyboard hook. And I was like, uh, what's the command? And we were typing keyboard and wasn't really getting anything. And um, I believe there's a few ways to do it, but let's start with the square here. And then there's the plain install keyboard hook. Oh. Or maybe we could use use hook as as a more universal one perhaps um add the force to the lineup above it jackie i don't know how it got dis it disappeared but thank you so uh so so those are let's see if that works at least i'll save it and i'll run it and perhaps your our Small test here will work a little bit better this time. Okay, and F5. Ah, look at oh, that. Yeah, it actually did. So here it showed us that we had the number at four. It has an, mm. an, 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 an down and an up and an up apparently, or probably something of that type. So 
to me, I would guess that the one is for the system and the other one is for this script external numpad. So that's why it's, it's there multiple times. But yeah, and then there's the five to update this. If I press the five again, you, you see there you have the five up because it actually updates before the up event happens. <laughs> So we're missing the last line that would be the five up because it has happened, but no matter. Um, so we can capture the numpad for, do you have the external thingy you have plugged in? Yeah. yeah. And Ready? it has a numpad four. Yep. Yeah, try and click it. Okay, okay. so it actually acts as numpad four. Um, okay. We'll click that and we'll click the five. And we'll see Ooh, here. Look at that. It takes it at, as number four. And yeah. if we look over here on the virtual key, um, it's 64 and the scan code is uh, 04B. Yeah. 04B. Yeah. So it's seeing same. it as the exact same. Uh -huh. And you can probably do something unknown to me uh, to to still determine but as you have the 10 keys on your keyboard right and you now have the same 10 keys on a separate keyboard with this simple method it's it's seeing them as the same thing mm -hmm. so in this case it would be the same thing as pressing your normal 10 keys uh, unless there's something extra you could try and see if someone has come up with something on the forum or something yeah let's see what would be uh i'm trying to think what we'd even search yeah it's a good question um do you have some kind of yeah you can use that one okay um you have some kind of link. I, I, I got it. I got it. I got it. Okay. So on here, I would probably go to the actual main search here. Oh, that's right. To, yeah. to get some Google assistance and then say Extra, perhaps extra keyboard or, or external. It could also be yeah, external. I'll try extra. Yeah, yeah. List of keys. Can uh, be this one perhaps? Maybe it has an answer. That that AHKID library on a hotkey distinguish between two different keyboards. I I actually have that AHKID yeah. library. Um, install or not install but downloaded and a couple example files i was playing with it but it was pretty advanced so maybe i'm sure you can figure it out i was i i looked at it and i'm like yeah it's maybe it's possible hey look geek dude hey look geek dude yeah so hmm. there, there's as, uh, that library at least seems to be able to do it and there's probably more uh since then this is from 2015 so right i'm just browsing it quickly to see if something showed up how to correctly detain detect main keyboard and okay this one should we go and look at that sure yeah got yeah. my new num Pad, numeric keypad. See, that sounds like what you did. Yeah, numeric. And, yeah. Uh, and want to li use it like additional keys. It has blah, blah, blah. Fair enough. And it looks pretty similar. It's not the same. It's pretty similar. And try this one. I just copied this from here, there. Okay. Good find, good start point. Uh, thank you very much. Works for us. Oh, apparently that small thing works. Right. Well, maybe it's not too small, but yeah. On message, you pressed. 
size of raw input device list. Okay, so when exists two keyboards, so there must have been some specific information up here somewhere. But does it have real number keys is easy to recognize. But with tab and backspace, I'm using the running scripts, keyboard LEDs to indicate own functions. And I see that this affects no LED or non numpad. So I mean, it's possible to recognize. Problem is that I don't understand correctly code to control LEDs. So I'm not sure we exactly, probably read it all. But to me, it's like, Tab keys and I can find difference by three programs. Okay, so it's running some extra programs perhaps. So it's not exactly what we want to do perhaps. I thought it was. But this to me when reading it disparatically like I'm doing here, or yeah, I'm not reading it fairly. Notice at the beginning of this, Jackie, right? He says, try this one. So doesn't, I mean, this one's not related to the stuff before. Here? No. Oh, he says, try this one there also. Uh, <laughs> and the one you were, or, or maybe, yeah, maybe that is the one. Yeah, I'm just saying, are the, I don't think this is related to the other one. Oh, no, but here, this one, this, the name of then how to correctly detect main keyboard and numpack keypad. Yeah. To me, this is, it doesn't really matter if he's able to detect what is the main keys, then you would also be able to detect what are non-main keys, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so I was like, yeah, this should somehow be able to detect um, different devices. And my only issue with just reading it quickly mm -hmm. was that this one started with, um, where was it? It was just down here with this, this, this small thing here when it exists to keyboards, is that his own GUI that has that name? Yeah, okay. So now it makes a bit more okay. sense. So let's let's select all of this and try it. Why not? No. Yeah. On your Yeah, studio is up. Oh up here. Yeah. yeah. Um do you wanna just use this one? That's fine. If you now try and, and press your thingy, okay, and you're oh, oh, oh. that's so, odd. It's uh, that's exactly what I I did. The left, the left was my normal keyboard. The right was the uh, external numeric. Yeah. So this script in itself has the things oh, you need to that's beautiful. Yeah. And and of course it might not be like. Let's say you had this extra numpad thingy and you took it uh, and plugged it into a computer where you already had two keyboards or you had a keyboard and an extra key thingy and then you plugged in a third, then this method might not work. Right. I'm not sure. But here at least it has the main keyboard, the one that the PC is seeing as the main keyboard and then an extra. But if someone for some reason had two extras. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. yeah, so basically, like I said, I mean, I, you know, I spent for a nicer one for $15, but I, he, we, we could get something that, um, you know, for 12 bucks compared to $200 and with auto hotkey, um, be able to do something very similar. Now granted, I might need some whiteout or something to cover over the keys and, and you know, put a, a 
or a little sticky or something on it to help signify what it's for. But um, very cool. I'm not sure your small keyboard thingy you had, um, does it have removable keys? You know, I, I when I was ordering it, I thought about trying to look to find one that did. Hmm. They're, if, they're, if they're removable, they're on there pretty good. Um, but yeah. I, I figured some probably do, right? It, That's like if, if it's like the keyboard I have here, even mm -hmm. though I've never removed the key from it, I'm, yeah. I'm pretty sure I could uh, if I if I had a small tool to do it. Right. Um, but yeah, it was just you can probably buy individual keys with funny symbols on them or a small key printer or whatever. <laughs> I don't right, know what right. you could do, but yeah. Hey, here we go. Oh, it's a and it's it's just a little thing. So um, yeah, I think you're right. All right. I've, I've at least seen you can, you know, with weird symbols or uh, different letters or, you know, you have keyboards with all kinds of languages on them. So, of course, you can buy keys with different symbols. Right. That would be a thing. And who knows how much a bunch of uh, keyboard plastic keys would cost. You could probably buy them at a hundred in the bag or whatever. <laughs> you, you know, you, you're going to laugh at this, but to me, what I would probably just do is go raid my wife's fingernail polish, you know, or yeah. hope, and, and maybe some crazy other kid and get, anyway, the point being paint them all a different color, right? Yeah. Cause your brain, once you get used to it, you'll, you'll know what it's just helping you differentiate. Right. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. But yeah, you probably even use her fingernail polish remover to remove what's already huh. on there. Yeah, yeah, perhaps. Cool. That, well, that, that was awesome, man. That, that yeah. worked out. That's a, and it's just another great example of like, auto hockey is amazing, right? Like, yeah. Just uh, now, granted, we still have a little work here to do because we'd have to, once we detect that what's pressed, then we got to go tell it what to do, right? So we'd have to have a build a tool to make it simple probably simple to go tell it to go interact with something um, those tools do come with a macro like creator to to tell it to do stuff it i think it'd be very interesting i i wish they weren't so expensive because i would love to know how they programmatically interact like with um obs and with uh davinci resolve was the other one i saw examples of how are the it oh Oh, it's sending accelerator keys. I'll bet you that's what they're doing, right? It's yeah, not. Most likely. Yeah, it's not sending like a control click or anything. It's just sending that accelerator key. Uh, you're remapping it. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Hmm? Very cool, man. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I, that's. So here you actually have that way or this way, right? <laughs> so you actually have the the. It, it down here in that small piece down here uh -huh. you actually have where it differentiates between them in this u pressed and and this up here is actually handling um, what's going on and depending on on uh, if if what's in the buffer is keyboard one then it goes to this way and if it's not goes to that way mm. so here is that's okay i'm with you in essence the, the small last part right of actually differentiating yeah. if it puts it into one or right. the other yeah so, and it's dynamically pulling in that the the vk key number thing that's that's the yeah what was pressed but this is choosing yeah. which one of those two gooey uh yeah exactly things. so when when you have it done when when you have this pressed or whatever uh, small piece of code you wanted to do it's it's pretty straightforward probably mm -hmm. to to set up different differentiating actions for whatever was pressed on on the keyboard thing because instead of going for this one you would just build your entire code down here and say if right uh, and and then say get keyboard name hey, throw one in there yeah um 
something like that. If, oh, did it put it itself? It did. It sure no. did, yeah. yeah. Fair enough. Uh, equals and whatever, right? But uh, numpad four, right. if, if that was the, the one we were trying to remap and then put uh, take um, this. Uh, we'll do a, throw a message box in front of that. Right, because we can we can literally right now test this. It's so it's that easy. Yeah. Um, so I need some extra stuff here. That one. It's it's missing a few of my key presses here, apparently. Oh. So, yeah, th this should actually be all that will. This is a very crude way of doing it, right? If, right. if you wanted to make something uh, more worthwhile, you would do something a bit more. Um, does it actually say zero four or does it say four? I don't remember. I don't remember. I wasn't trying to click that. I was trying to click this one. And if you then clicked it says, oh. So that was on so, the, the keyboard one. Um, okay, my actual so, keyboard was was that one, by the way. Okay, so I put it in the, the main keyboard one, yeah, so right. to speak, in, instead of in the secondary one. But that was would just be a matter of, of moving it up right. here, right? So. Yeah. And and probably this, this is just this. Did you really miss that? Did yeah. patience. So I'll wait. remove that. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, un oh. Undo. Uh, change. Oh. Just change that message box to say, uh, uh, you know, um, whatever. Take, uh, internal internal keyboard or whatever. But yeah. Yeah. There you go. I think in studio, you can just launch it. You don't have to save it. It'll, yeah, it'll it's, uh, yeah. It's the same with sad A, but I still do it. it, it I, I haven't been able to stop going and saving. Yeah. All right. So here's the normal keyboard. Yeah. yeah. Which was the other. And here is my external numeric. That's awesome, yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, that's very cool. And, and that was, I don't know when we started, but that was, you know, it's like what, 15 minutes of, um, total work. I mean, that, that's great. Yeah, that's great, Joe. Happy that we were able to figure it out. I think, uh, yeah, that's a uh, what a great demonstration of just one of the reasons why AutoHotKey is such an amazing simple language to to be able to use. Yeah, because here you could have paid an amazing price for yeah. something. Uh, okay, I, I did like that it had fifteen LED screens on the buttons. Right. Fair enough. That's right. also worth something, but uh, yeah, if you're trying to do it on a small budget, fair right. enough. You can get all the functionality with just a piece of searching and a little knowledge. Well, and and with um, theoretically, we could do even a a lot more, right? Because now we, you know, there's programs that don't have accelerator keys that we wish they did and we can, you know, maybe use a control click or whatever, right, to take an action. So um, we could even nest them, which maybe you can do in theirs. Maybe you can say, do this and this and this and this, right? I, maybe they can do that in there. Yeah, some of them probably have some kind of macro program, but most likely it's limited. Mm -hmm. And we've even seen these differentiating keyboards online where they're, they allow you to start an auto hotkey action, which um, why not just use something that runs without a hotkey then? That was fun. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks, man. That was fun. Absolutely, Joe. All right. Yeah. Yeah.